In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let nothing upset you. Let nothing startle you. All things pass. God does not change. Patience wins all it seeks. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone is enough. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And welcome to Mansion 2 in our study of St. Teresa of Avila's interior castle. When we look at Mansion 2, I like to think of it as the mansion where we hear the Lord is calling. So I think it's an exciting mansion because the soul has now started to understand uh, what it feels like when the Lord is calling um, each individual person. So there's a lot to look at in this mansion. Um, Teresa tells us <clears throat> that persons in these rooms have begun to practice prayer and that they understand the importance of moving forward in the spiritual life. And she says, um, while the soul is growing in prayer, it's actually more difficult, however, than the first mansion. Why? Because now the soul is more aware of its own sin. It's more, uh, it's more attuned to its own sin. And it, it just makes it heavier and more difficult. This uh, is a time of struggle in this second mansion. And that's because of the disorder of the life that was lived outside of the castle. So now the soul soul starts to realize um, the sin and the habits that existed before entering the castle. That's why, uh, you know, I've been a teacher for almost 30 years. I always tell my students, start young. There's no reason why we can't enter this castle when we're children. And then it's a lot easier. You have less baggage. So it is really wonderful to start young. Now, Teresa says um, these souls are in, quote, a great war and a radical decision has to be made. Um, Some of the studies that I looked at said this uh, mansion is highlighted by three words. They are interiority, struggle, and communion. So it's a good way to encapsulate this mansion because the soul is called to go ever deeper inside. There's a struggle, but the beautiful thing is we're looking for union with our uh, beloved. Um, If you read carefully, you're going to notice that Teresa will use those typical Catholic words, right? Reason, faith, memory, will, intellect. It's important to know what these words mean. She's using the words of theologians and philosophers. We still use those in the 21st century to help us um, understand the journey because we know that the intellect tells us what is good and the will follows after it. The will is the power to make choices based on intellect, and we use our faith as well to rest in good choices. So she is a good teacher, and she is giving us the foundation for making good decisions. But souls in this mansion, while their intellect may know what to do, they often lack the determination required to keep from turning back because they don't avoid the occasions of sin. Unfortunately, while we're on this earth, there's always the danger of turning back when things get too difficult. So I think it's always good to talk to ourselves um, in that area. And Teresa writes, Oh Jesus, what an uproar the devil instigates here. And she goes into quite a bit of detail about Uh, particular ways that the enemy wreaks havoc on the soul. You know, there's a great book I'm going to show you by Dan Burke, The Devil in the Castle. I love this book because it goes through the particular demonic struggles in every mansion because uh, St. Teresa devotes quite a bit of time talking about the struggle with powers and principalities. But I like how Dan Burke organizes it. It's very easy to read. I wish this book would have been out in my 20s um, and I wouldn't have had to learn the hard way. So uh, I think it's a great resource and it's I think that it's pretty new. Uh, Teresa says, some souls here in this mansion can hear the Lord when he calls them. 
I think this is a great point to uh, sit on and remember. When the Lord calls us, for most of us, it's usually not an audible voice. We're not hearing uh, this deep uh, masculine voice in our heart, although some, some people do. But generally, that's not how the Lord speaks to us. Instead, it comes through sermons, good people, books, trials, illnesses or truths understood in prayer what a great grace it is when we're going through a trial or we're very sick to spend time in mental prayer and see the lesson we're supposed to be learning Um, there's so much we can gain through those trials and that is how the lord calls us so um, this is a very good point that Teresa makes She does say at this point our reason can cause tension because we see attacks in our intellect against what faith is showing us. I think this is good to remember. In the Catholic tradition, we know the intellect and the will both have to be purified. So if we're actually staying on the journey, our intellect will be purified, and it's especially difficult for intellectuals because intellectuals love to calculate everything based on reason if a soul soul sticks with the lord it will be purified and the soul will no longer be able to rely on their intellect in the way that they used to and they'll be heading into uncharted waters that's what the lord does that's a purification and that's why Teresa says you need experienced learned people to guide you on the journey uh, because some people haven't lived through that there or they haven't read about it and they don't know that's what the soul is experiencing so at this time there can be tension between uh reason and faith it's just a seeming temp a seeming tension because of course god never contradicts reason but to our limited reason it may seem to be this is difficult because one's faith is still weak and the trials and the temptations start increasing saint Teresa's prayer is may the soul not suffer deception and give up what was begun And like I said, that's a big temptation to give up. So strong determination is necessary. She says it's a mistake for these souls to look for consolation. At this stage in the game, souls are determined to not look for consolation and to understand it's a difficult journey and to know that the cross is the solace, not the consolations. Um... Teresa uses the story of Gideon. I love that story, the story of Gideon that's in Judges 6 and 7. If you know that story, um, Gideon has to go fight the Midianites, and the Lord tells Gideon he has too many people. Um, And there's this mysterious um, test with how they drink the water, and eventually more people are taken away, and he only has 300. And Teresa uses this story to say, A lot of people don't have the courage to keep going. Only a real soldier is going to persevere on this journey. And so, you know, as we see with a lot of the saints and in salvation history in scripture, um, it's just a remnant. It's a small number that's faithful. We know St. Teresa herself told the Lord, if this is how you treat your friends, no wonder you have so few. Um, It's not easy to remain the Lord's friend. It is costly, and a lot of people turn back. Um, So the valiant 300 soldiers in the book of Judges, those are our models in this book. Um, Teresa says souls at this level have to flee from evil companionship. If you study the doctors and the mystics of the church, I think there's certain times in life where souls are just fine um, being close to people with whom they are not equally yoked in terms of the faith because they're evangelizing and bringing the good news. But then there's some times where you just need people on the journey next to you. It takes a good spiritual director to notice the difference. Um, Here, Teresa will use Pauline imagery. You definitely get uh, the sense you're reading some of those Pauline letters when she's talking about the battle. 
and talking about companions. She situates her castle, this Theresean castle, is definitely um, characterized by Pauline spiritual militancy. Now, at this point in the journey, a, a person with experience may be necessary. Um, and I think, though, it's so full of hope because Teresa says, even if you don't find an experienced person, the Lord will help you. And of course, she's speaking from experience. We know uh, Teresa herself had so many bad spiritual directors. She found terrible, terrible directors that hindered her progress. So she learned from experience the Lord alone was her guide. Deuteronomy 32. Um, because she didn't have a good, there were just not good people in the church in her, in her local area until later on. Um, she says, in speaking of companions, I like this, look for other people who are in the same room and those that are in rooms closer to the center. Um, I always thought this was kind of amusing. I don't know if you want to take all your friends and take a quiz and see what mansion you are in, <laughs> in the interior castle. Um, of course, I'm teasing, but it's interesting that she says, find others who are in the same mansion. Uh, I think that's an interesting question, how we would go about that. But I think it's a great ideal to have. You have to have some people who have the same values, the same discipline in prayer life to hold you accountable. Um, one of my favorite questions in the entire interior castle is in Mansion 2. And Teresa asks this, what do we do when we give up prayer? Do you know what the answer is? Begin again. <laughs> I love that because uh, we all go through stages sometimes where maybe we give up. And she is so uh, simple. And she just says, you begin again. It's never too late. You just start all over again. Here, right now, we're filming during Holy Week. And I feel like every week, during this Lenten season, one priest or another at Mass has said, have you had a difficult Lent? Let's start again. Let's start again. So it's a wonderful um, piece of encouragement from Mother Church. Um, now, we know that in this mansion there are temptations uh, which uh, Teresa always uses the language of those animals, those reptiles. Um, and I like how she has an eye for God's mercy. She writes this, Sometimes he even permits these reptiles to bite us, so that afterwards we may know how to guard ourselves better. You know, and at other times the saint will say, God permits us to get entangled in a particular sin because we will have mercy on others later on. We'll know how to help others later on and we will have humility. So uh, there's a lot of nuance in the interior castle and that's why I think it is definitely a classic and why we still look to it 500 years later um, so that it can speak to all of us. Um, and she will consistently bring up throughout the entire interior castle, even out of your fall, God will bring good. And so um, I'm going to include some questions for reflection at the end of this very short mansion. It's a short mansion. It's just one chapter, but it's full of struggles. And I think good things to consider are, what is it like when I hear God's voice? Do I know what God's voice sounds like to me. Um, I'm going to include the scripture from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3. I love that story um, where Samuel says, Here I am, Lord. Um, he didn't know the Lord was calling him. And it's a beautiful passage. Well, it's a sad passage because the state of Israel was so low. Nobody knew that the Lord could even call you. Nobody was listening. Nobody was holy enough to care. But here's this young boy who hears the Lord calling him. And that's what we're all called to. So how does the Lord call you specifically? What is your love language with the Lord? Um, 
how is your schedule for daily prayer what is your schedule like for mental prayer do you allow time each day for mental prayer do you have someone in your life you can be accountable to for prayer um, when we go to the second dwelling places uh, are there things in our old life we have to leave behind how is this a struggle there's always things we have to leave behind in the spiritual journey how do we go about that when you fall do you trust in the mercy of God um, I like how this book is definitely peppered with reminders of God's mercy so I hope that will encourage us all as we continue on this journey of prayer and we'll see you next time in mansion 3